submitted your CV and you have been waiting to get that final call and finally when you really receive the call you are not ready for that yes are you really ready for that interview which is long desired and many times you really wonder that what it takes to get the best of the preparation for your next interview during these critical times when many people are jobless and they are really counting the days that when they are going to get the next opportunity you really need to focus on your skill sets and concentrate so that you can improve yourselves maybe you get a better chance to sharpen your skills so this video is going to give you more information on preparing interviews so you might be thinking that what is going to be special in this video because many of you have already worked in different companies and some of you are already fresher and by this time you must have seen a lot of videos on interview facing skill. Hi, I'm Pramanko Das. I'm basically an international trainer and motivator. I have a background in human resource and recruitment for a long time. For last 15 years, I have been seriously recruiting in senior level position and top management position. So from a CEO's perspective or even from a recruitment manager's perspective, I can tell you that what is really important for a management or for a recruiter when they really recruit people. Do you know what exactly it takes to get that dream job or how exactly you can ensure that you get success in your next interview? So if you really want to get all these answers, you should watch this video carefully till the end so that you get answers to all your questions. And if you are new to my channel, let me welcome you to PMA, which is Positive Mental Attitude, where you can always find this kind of inspirational and positive videos. And if you are still not subscribed to my channel, go to that, click the bell button and click it and click on the subscribe button so that you can always get notified for such interesting videos. So let's get into the topic. Generally, we always see that people always have a lot of questions about what type of questions I might be faced or what type of questions I will expect. Generally, it has been seen the first three minutes of an interview is very important when an interviewer decides that whether you are really going to make it or not. So what exactly is that first three minutes? Normally, it has been seen that we always try to make our first impressions when we go to communicate to ourselves. So what is that first question which we generally get? Yes, they always ask you a very common and usual friendly question like, tell me about yourself. So what exactly you have planned or you have thought to say? You probably start with a long story or sometimes you try to make a lot of impact by starting about a very absorbing story of your life. Wait. Next time, when you give answer to this question, you have to be very sure that it has to be to the point. Why exactly they are asking you to answer this question, which is very simple. The answer is they really want you to hear. They want you to know that how much you could really communicate yourself professionally. They want to see that how much you are keen for the job. They really want to see that how much you are focused about your profession. And in short, they want to see your, how you could present yourself professionally. So, more possible, try to keep it precise and to the point. Generally, when it comes to academic skills, people always have a habit to stretch it further. They always try to emphasize about their achievements. But you must know that you should always keep it brief. When it comes to professional skills, you should always highlight from the latest experience so that they can understand the skill sets which are more relevant to the job role. Many times we always try to focus too much on the trivial and the other secondary topics which may not be the immediate influencing point for that particular job role. You have always a question that why exactly you would be selected and that is why sometimes you face a question that give me some reason for why we should hire you today. So when you get such questions, you have to understand, they really want to hear from you that what exactly is that unique skill or the unique knowledge we have for which you should be hired. 
So if you basically get this question, you have to handle it very tactfully. You should immediately highlight your unique skills which makes you relevant for the job role. Probably if you are a fresher, you can say that I am a fast learner and I am quite adaptive which makes me easily fit in any team environment. Apart from that, I always like to approach any new challenge with a lot of enthusiasm and energy. So these are the qualities which can definitely put you on the higher level in the selection for the recruitment. Similarly, if you are a pro or an experienced, then you have to understand that how you will handle this question. Generally, most of the time it has been seen that there are a lot of experienced people. If I take my example, I have been working in human resource for the last 22 years. But that doesn't mean that I am really one of the best professionals. There are many such better professionals than me who are much talented than me. But the only thing is that if you really want to really ensure that you always remain at the top of your success and keep performing is that always understand that how we can get the comfort zone with people. Remember, we are social animals. So when you are next time in an interaction or an interview, you have to always develop the comfort zone with the person to whom you are speaking. Because you have to understand you might be an expert in your field, but how much you can create that comfort zone and how much you can give the feeling of confidence. If you really can influence your interviewer, you can really make him or her confident about yourself and always you have to keep in mind that how much you can really make them feel that you are trustworthy. Most of the time they ask you some behavioral questions. For example, they could even ask you a question that when was the last time you have handled a stressful situation in your job role? Or you might also get a question that give an example when you have handled a difficult customer situation or how effective you have been in customer service in your past job role. All these questions have something in common. These are all your past experience. So this is an wonderful opportunity where you could really explain about your experiences and your role which you have really performed in those scenarios. So you have to describe the situation and the kind of action which you have really taken to handle this task. And finally, you should highlight the results, that what exactly was the end resultant of that particular situation. So these are some basic things which you should always keep in your mind when you're facing the interview. And always to get a successful job, a successful interview is also important. So we would be discussing all these things later in this video. that a successful job is only possible when you are really ready to get a successful interview and the secret of successful job is hidden how successfully you can give the interview many a times it has been seen that you have done months and years of practice but when the final DD is there still something is not really done which basically can lead to your failure so what exactly are those things which you should avoid and what are the things you should do to make sure that you succeed in your interview and you can crack the first interview or maybe the interview which you have been waiting for long to get that dream job. The five things which you should always remember that number one, you should always understand no matter how much needy you are, you should not ever show the need to your employer. Make sure that you actually show them that how much you're interested for the job, but don't show that your desperation to get the job. Second thing, many times it has been seen that people always ask you some question to confuse you, but you should remain focused on your point. And the third thing is always understand that why you are really special for the job. Many times candidates doesn't know the reason that why they are unique among the other candidates. So when you get questions like why I should hire you, you should be able to know that what exactly are the reasons which makes you unique for the job role. And finally, 
The fourth point that you should always keep in mind that you are basically going to get the job for which you are good at. So if you really make it very clear to yourself that what makes you really suitable for that job role, what are the key skills you have which makes you very deserving for that job role, it will be always easier to get a good impression for your employer. And finally, you should make it a point that when you are going for the job, always visualize yourself to be successful for that job role. Because many a times we have a lot of negative clues and negative thoughts which really make situation worse and perhaps for the reason why we fail in interview. So you always go with the optimistic mindset and make sure that when you give the interview, all these five important things they should remember. Now I'm going to tell you, when you're going to face the interview, what exactly is the technique which you should follow. These days, in most of the interview rounds, people ask behavioral questions. They ask you situational questions. So in that time, you have to use a technique which you all know, STAR technique. Now what does this STAR stands for? S stands for situation. So you have to really give the situation, the kind of situation where you have basically handled the similar situation. For example, if you have been asked that in your last job where you have done a good customer service, so probably you have to give certain situation where you have demonstrated the skill for giving good customer service. Similarly, when you have been asked the question about the task, always try to highlight those tasks which highlight those potential skills which the employer is interested about. And finally, you should also talk about the actions, that what exactly the actions you have taken in order to get that desired objective. And finally, you should always emphasize on the results which you have really been able to derive in order to attain that goal. So if you really use this STAR concept or the STAR approach, you will be able to give this answer more efficiently. And next time when you are basically getting a behavioral question, always use this principle to make a better impression on your employer's mind. And always remember, whenever you are basically facing the interview with a positive mindset, you will always have a higher chance to succeed in job. Most of the time, people always ask some basic questions. So let us start about the first few questions which you might get in all interviews. Most of the time, the interviewer asks you a question, tell me about yourself. Now this happens to be a very general question. Now what exactly is the reason that the HR is always asking you this question? I have got interviewed several times and I have taken more than thousands of interviews throughout in my human resource career. And from my experience I can tell you the most of the HR ask this question normally to know the reason that how good you present yourself. They wanted to know that how much you are keen for the job role. And that is probably they want to ask you this question. They want to see your communication skill. They want to see that how well you could present yourself. And that is the reason why they give you the opportunity to say about yourself. But you have to keep in mind that you should highlight those skills which are really an interest for the employer. You should be intelligent enough in focusing your key skills which are in line with the job you are applying for. Finally, when you really can successfully give this particular answer, you might get questions like what exactly are your interests or what exactly you like to do or what exactly makes you feel that you are appropriate for this job role. So that is really a wonderful opportunity for you where you can really showcase your strengths or the core areas in which you are good. This is really giving you an area, your turf, where you can give your best of your answers. So make sure a good rehearsal, a good practice always gives you an option to give you always the tailor-made answer. Many times it has been seen in interview rounds, people ask you the question that where you'd like to see yourself in the next two years or five years time from now. So the basic reason of asking this question is they want to know your planning or they want to see your future vision. Most of the time people make a mistake of assessing their level or their future. So you have to be 
very careful in giving this answer. Instead of giving a very specific answer, you should try to emphasize more on your career. For example, you could say that I would like to improve myself vertically in my area of knowledge. I would like to see myself growing further in my industry where I could see myself as one of the experienced and seasoned professional in my department so that I can give good contributions and profit to my organization. So probably this can take you to a positive side for that opportunity. Many times it has been seen, the interviewer also asking the question that why should I hire you or what exactly gives me the interest to hire you. So you have to understand that if you are a professional then definitely you have to give those areas which makes you specific or unique for the job role. But if you are a fresher then of course you have to emphasize on the qualities like you are learnable, you can adapt yourself in any given situation and you are really a good team player. You can demonstrate some example from your college life, from your university background which tells you that you are a good team player. And finally you get some tricky questions which can be also called as bouncers. Many times they ask you questions like what will you do if you get a good opportunity from one of our competitor and what exactly will be your stand if their pay packet is better than us and then many a times it has been seen that you get confused but keep in mind that you are actually being tested by this type of questions so if you get this type of questions you could always set your focus and be very neutral in giving answer that I will always remain loyal to your organization because if I can give my best, I know that I can get the same opportunity in this organization and I will be always focusing on my education and the knowledge which I get in this company. And if you are a professional, then you can always highlight that I believe in able leadership and a co company of your stature is always going to give me the kind of opportunity and the culture which I'm looking for. So this will definitely give a higher loyalty and a value of yours. Finally, you may also get a question like, what are your salary expectations? Remember, they always want to get an answer from you, but you have to be very specific in how to sideline these questions with a diplomatic style. Many a times, the interviewers are really keen to get a particular quote from you, but you have to be really good enough in negotiating and clever enough to show that you really ready for negotiation. So if you are a fresher then you can always say that I do not doubt about the opportunity or the kind of salary range. I always know that your organization is going to give me the standard pay as per the industry norms. My entire focus is building on my knowledge and my skills and I'm really keen to work with your organization. And if you are an experienced, probably you can give an answer that I always keep myself open to really go for the new challenges and opportunities and whichever is really suited with your industry norms and standards I'll be ready to work for that because I believe I can bring in the contribution and bring in the profit which you are looking for so hope whatever is deserving for me that will never be a problem with the organization but still if they're keen to get a figure you can still give them a quote which is basically within the range but never give an exact figure which can be too risky for you. Sometimes they can also ask you a question that if you are basically being placed at a rural location or if you are being placed at any remote locations what would be your reaction? They wanted to know their reactions. You want to basically be tested for your mindset. So if you get this type of question, you should handle it smartly, saying that I'm always passionate about my work and I always want to go in any region wherever my job becomes me. But of course, I would really not like to work in any remote location for a longer time. Preferably, I would like to rotate myself in different opportunities. So I think this will give a fair idea of your temperament and your attitude. But at the same time, keep in mind that some job requires relocation. So if you're really ready for relocation, you should be very clear about it. Because 
You should only say yes to those opportunities for which you are really open and ready. Finally, it's time to ask questions. Finally, when the interviewer finishes, they often give you the opportunity to give some information or they probably ask you that if you have any questions, you can. But many times it has been seen, the interviewer say, I have nothing to ask, that's all, thank you. But don't make that mistake because if you ask questions, you actually show your keenness for the job. The employer always take it positively if you are asking questions related to the job. Probably you can ask them that what exactly is the project all about or what are the training scope in your organization or what are the growth policy in this particular area. So this kind of question is always going to give a positive impression on the employer's mind. So if you really want to ace up your next interview, please remember these few tips which I have described in this video and I hope if you really like this kind of videos on interview and self-development please go in the comment section and give your valuable comments and if you are really watching my video for the first time then please go and subscribe my channel and click on the bell button to get further notification for such inspirational and positive videos that's all thank you